Now you have a good understanding of the project structure. Let's work on the simple task. Where a client calls localhost8080 slash greeting question mark with your name equals Harry, then our application will respond to this request by sending hello Harry back to the client. If the client does not provide any query parameter, our application sends back hello world instead. Let's get started. First, let me close all those files. And I'm going to delete this line because we still want our Spring Boot application to start on port 8080. Delete and save, then close it. First, Let's create a controller package. Right click, new package. Under this package, let's create a controller class to handle the incoming HTTP request. And let's give it a name. Greeting controller. To make this class responsible for handling incoming request, we need to annotate it using at rest controller. To handle a request, let's define a handler method called great in this controller class. Let me put the requesting URL here. The wizard name is optional. Then how do we let Spring Boot know that we want to use this method, the greet method, to handle the incoming request, localhost 8080 slash greeting? We need to use annotation called get mapping to annotate this method. At get mapping. Get mapping is for handling HTTP get request. This annotation takes one parameter, the URL it is interested in. So in this case, you don't have to write localhost 8080, just slash greeting, this part. It tells Spring that any HTTP GET request with the slash greeting path should be mapped to this GREAT method. You can define many handler methods in this class. And there are also other annotations. Besides get mapping, we also have post mapping, put mapping, delete mapping, and so on. As you can see, these annotations correspond to HTTP verbs. Next, how to retrieve the optional query parameter in the URL? in this case, wizard name. Spring Boot can automatically detect and retrieve query parameters from a request and assign them or bind them to the formal parameters of the handler method. Okay, let's create a formal parameter to accept wizard name. This is not enough. We have to use an annotation called at request param to annotate this formal parameter. This annotation can bind a query parameter to a method formal parameter in a controller. This process is called data binding. Please note that we're annotating a formal parameter of 
a method. However, it is possible that there are multiple query parameters. For example, in this case, there's only one. But what if we have a second query parameter? For example, age equals 21. Then we need to let Spring know which one we're interested in for binding. In this case, which one we're going to put into name, whether name or age. So let me delete this. So it turns out that at request prime takes several properties. The first one is called name. It tells Spring Boot to bind query parameter with your name to formal parameter name. There are other interesting properties. For example, required, and we're going to make it false because wizard name is optional. Another interesting property is called default values. If the client does not pass wizard name, then we're going to assign a default value to name. In this case, we're going to make it world. OK, this line becomes very long, so let me format it. Okay, now we have this name. Name will be Harry. Let's return hello Harry. Or if the client is not passing with a name, we're going to return hello world. That's it. We're done. Let's start the project to test. Now, of course, you can use this play button to run Spring Boot Hello World application. But now let me show you a second way to start a Spring Boot project. Do you remember I mentioned MVNW and MVNW.command? So let's use them. So here we're going to go to Terminal. IntelliJ has a built-in terminal. First, let me show you where I am. So right now, I'm under the project Spring Boot Hello World. Here is the command to start this Spring Boot project. Dot forward slash MVNW Spring Boot colon run. Press Enter. Now Maven will build the project and also start the project. As you can see here, Tomcat started on port 8080. Okay. This time we're not using the play button, we're using Maven script. Next, let's toggle over to Chrome and a test. So here I'm going to type localhost 8080 forward slash grating. First, let's test question mark wizard name equals Harry. Okay, press enter. Now we have hello Harry. Now what if I pass hello Bing Yang and press enter? Now it returns hello Bing Yang. Now what if I'm not passing any query parameter? Let's go back here. So grating and no query parameter, press enter. This time is hello world. Okay, so we're done. Let's go back to IntelliJ. Let me properly format it by inserting a line. It is just a personal coding style. I like to insert an empty line um, at the very beginning and also the end of class. OK, let's do a summary. Although there is not much code here, quite a lot is going on. Let's recap the important parts. There are three annotations in this simple example. They are annotating different levels of things in Java. 
The at rest controller annotation tells Spring that this particular class serves the role of a rest controller. It also provides hints for people reading the code. In this case, Spring considers it when handling incoming web requests. The second annotation is at get mapping. This annotation provides routing information. It tells Spring that any HTTP request with the slash greeting path should be mapped to this greet method in this controller. The add rest controller annotation tells Spring to render the resulting string directly back to the caller. The third annotation is add request param. You can use the add request param annotation to bind request parameters, that is, query parameters or form data to a method formal parameter in a controller. That's all for this quick demo.